Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. It holds all things together and knows every word spoken by man. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, you're very welcome this morning to this celebration of First Communion in this church, Newtown Manor, on Sunday the 26th of May. And I bid a special welcome to the seven first Holy Communicants before us this morning who will receive their first Holy Communion today. I also bid a special welcome to their parents and to their grandparents and to their friends and extended family on this important day. Because a celebration like this is a milestone of faith. And that is the kernel of what we celebrate. We celebrate a milestone of faith for these children, and not only for these children, but also for their parents, who have handed on the faith to this point uh, very, very effectively. So we pay due honour to the children, to their parents, and indeed to the general Christian community this morning. So I bid you all a very warm welcome to this Mass. Uh, as always, we celebrate Mass within the context of sorrow for our sins. And the children understand this as a failure to love. Or in other words, they understand sin as a failure to love. So now we admit the times when we have failed to love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned from my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I failed to do, and I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory be to God, glory be to God, glory to the Father. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. from St. Paul, who wrote to help people understand what Jesus wants them to do. 
Dear friends, I wrote this letter to tell you what a wonderful and very special privilege it is to be counted among the friends of Jesus. I asked you more earnestly not to argue and not to quarrel. You know what Jesus wants? He wants you to be real friends to one another. He wants you to do things together. May his peace be always with you. This is the word of the Lord. Paul wrote this letter to tell the people what happened at the Last Supper. My friends, this is what happened at the Last Supper. On the night before he died, the Lord Jesus took bread. He spoke the bread. He spoke over the bread and gave thanks. This is my body. Then he shared it with them. In the same way, he took the chalice of wine and said, This chalice of wine is the new covenant in my blood. Then he said, Have this supper again in my memory. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand now for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who issues from the Father, he will be my witness. And you too will be witnesses, because you have been with me from the outset. I shall have many things to say to you, but they would be too much for you now. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth, since he will not be speaking as from himself, but will say only what he has learned, and he will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify me, since all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. Please be seated for two minutes. Well, our first attention is drawn this morning 
to the feast day which we celebrate. And the feast day which we celebrate today is a very important one in the church's liturgical year because it is the feast of Pentecost Sunday. And we dwell now on that briefly for a moment because it's very important. Jesus lived, he died. The disciples were absolutely filled with fear and they hid away. But Jesus promised them that he would send the Holy Spirit and he said that the Holy Spirit would make a difference. And sure enough, the Holy Spirit came on the first Pentecost Sunday and made a tremendous difference to the disciples. Because the Holy Spirit would be the embodiment of God and Jesus in himself. And he sent them out to be messengers of forgiveness and of hope to all peoples. They were to be, in the words of the gospel, witnesses. You would imagine to be sent out as messengers of peace and uh, of forgiveness would have been a bit inappropriate. Surely it would have been more appropriate to send these disciples out as messengers of revenge <clears throat> and of the wrath of God and of a nay for a nay and a tooth for a tooth. This might be more appropriate, an appropriate form of a discipleship given that Jesus suffered such an infamous and a cruel death on Calvary. But no, the disciples and those who were to follow in their steps would be sent out as messengers of forgiveness and of love and of hope. And in a certain sense, we as messengers of Christ today uh, are also sent out in that vein. Not to be messengers of, of doom and gloom or of wrath <clears throat> or of violence or of hatred or of revenge, but disciples and messengers of Christ, messengers of his forgiveness and of his love. And so we celebrate this feast day this morning on Pentecost Sunday and we give joy we are joyful and we give praise and thanks for God to God for the gift of the Holy Spirit who has made a difference in the lives of us all. These children this morning who will receive their first Holy Communion will share in all of that. They also are <clears throat> and will continue to be witnesses of Christ in the world. And please God, they will grow up to be effective witnesses in their lives, giving testimony by their to, uh, through their lives to the reality of Christ's presence among us through the Holy Spirit. And that is the kernel of what we celebrate indeed this morning. The parents have fought the good fight. They have brought these children to this day and handed on something precious to them. And I think it was the bishops in their pastor letter uh, handing on the faith in the home that sa who said that um, the home must be the first school of religion and the first school of prayer. And indeed, they are very correct because if the home is not a school of religion, and of prayer. As the bishops put it in that letter, um, then faith will not be communicated. And so we give thanks this morning for the reality of the communication of the faith to these children. And they have it. And I'm sure they, it will impact and have a tremendous effect upon them in their lives. <clears throat> provided that that uh, faith is guarded and is realized to be something precious and which needs uh, the guardianship of parent, of family, and of community to make it grow and to make it 
uh, remain. Because this indeed is a celebration of the fate of us all. The fate of the home, the fate of the school, and the fate of the community uh, at large. And also, of course, uh, credit is due to the teachers of these children uh, at school. Mrs. Rosalind Dolan is the religion teacher of these children, and she has done her utmost to communicate that uh, seed of faith, that which is precious to the children this morning, and has done so effectively, building on the faith that is communicated in the home, and only building on that, because without the faith in the home, faith in the school would be almost impossible to communicate. And also the master there on the school choir, just at this juncture I'll say a word uh, of thanks to them as well uh, for their beautiful singing this morning. And of course Marcella uh, Corrigan, who uh, accompanies the choir on the uh, organ uh, this morning. Also her presence and her help is, is much appreciated. We will go on from here now and we will allow the liturgy uh, in its manifold shape and direction to speak for itself. And let us please stand now and express together the words of the Creed which summarizes all of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we now make our prayers of the faithful conscious that we are faithful to the Lord in our own unique way. God, our Father, you have given us your word that you will not be far from those who call upon you in prayer. In faith and hope and love, we ask you to graciously hear us now. Faithful to Mass and the Lord, hear us. Let us pray for parents and grandparents. God bless us and guide us in the world you have given us. Bless our our faith, our teachers, and all who look after our children. Lord hear us. God bless our country and our people everywhere. We pray for resumption and our peace in our knowledge. May the peace melt all heart and hearts. Lord hear us. Dear Jesus, bless all the people in our parish. Help us to love one another, visit the sick, the old and the lonely among us. Help us to appreciate the community of our parish and the friendship of its people. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are sick, bereaved, or in hospital at this time. Bring our healing to the sick and their care. Lord, hear us. We also perhaps ask the Lord for a particular intention to each of us gathered in this church this morning. We ask him now the silence of our hearts for our own particular needs, conscious that the Lord knows well what we need, eh, so we ask him. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, hear our prayers which we put to you through the intercession of Mary and in the name of Jesus, your Son, who is with us today and always, forever and ever. Amen. Please have a seat. Just before the offer, we have to take off the collection uh, one of those necessary evils uh, because we do it every Sunday so we have to do this song as well.
during the week, uh, Tuesday at 8 p.m. and Sunday at 10 a.m. There will be no Mass here on Thursday evening. The liturgy for the month of June are readers Gary Comiskey, collectors Michael Comiskey and Liam Martin. Um, there are several notes on your sheet as well, um, which you can read, I'm sure, in your own good time. There are leaflets there at the back of the church on the way out, uh, speaking about the beatification of Edmund Rice, um, and they are available at the entrance. Uh, he is the founder of the Christian and Presentation Brothers, and his life story is somewhat illuminating, shall we say. So there are leaflets uh, explaining that at the back of the church. The Austin pilgrimage to Lourdes begins uh, tomorrow. Um, see now. Staff and residents of Oris Brefni invite you to an afternoon of refreshments and chat at Oris Brefni on Thursday, the 6th of June, uh, from 2.30 until 4.30 p.m. And there's a couple of other notes there on your sheet as well. Uh, I'm sure you'll have an opportunity to read them. Now we begin the focal point of this first Holy Communion Mass when the gifts, <coughs> the gifts of water and bread and wine are presented to the, to the altar so that they may become part of our offering of the Eucharist. And to bring up the gifts uh, will be Patrick Hart, Kevin McDermott, Seamus Kerrigan and John Waters. to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And pray now, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Father, we come before you with gladness and joy on this most blessed day. We bring bread and wine for the Mass, beautiful gifts from your earth. From your loving hands we will receive it in return. We will receive in return the most precious gift in heaven or on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Today you sent the Holy Spirit on those marked out to be your children by sharing the life of your only Son, and so you brought the Paschal mystery to its completion. Today we celebrate the great beginning of your church when the Holy Spirit made known to all peoples the one true God and created from the many languages of man one voice to profess one faith. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim now the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with John, Paul, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand now and pray together in the words that Jesus himself taught us, the Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I would ask you all to join me in this prayer for peace, small little prayer for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. And let us offer each other now a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy 
in us. Now, God, we take away the sins of the world and the branch of the world. I break the bread of life for these boys and girls who are about to receive their first Holy Communion. May they grow in friendship with the Lord Jesus and with each other. This is the bread of life. This is the Lamb of God. Come and receive him in your first Holy Communion. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Only say the word and I shall be healed. Column now is going to do one prayer before, I very nearly forgot that, as always. Uh, the first prayer before Holy Communion. Well done, Kerry. And now Nigel and Natalie Hart will do their prayer together. They are brother and sister. One of Nigel, Natalie. Jesus, I love and adore you. A special friend to me. Welcome, Lord Jesus. Oh, welcome. Thank you for coming to me. Very good. Well done. Body of Christ, Amen. Body of Christ, 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 Body of Christ.
Now we have the prayers after Holy Communion. And the first of these will be said by David McDermott. Thank you, Lord Jesus, so thank you for giving yourself to me. Make me strong to show your love wherever I may be. 
and the second will be said by Neve Fowley. Well done, Leif. And the third by James Kerrigan. Well done, James. Very good. <coughs> Uh, just before we finish uh, our first Holy Communion Mass, um, there is another little ceremony, a little ceremony of light which takes place. And this ceremony, uh, in it, the parents with their children will show that they intend to continue to carry the flame of faith for their child and to be there as a support structure for their child in the days to come. Uh, they will receive a light from the Paschal candle symbolizing the transmission of faith uh, from the parent and from the community to these children and it symbolizes also the parent as the guardian of all that's precious in the child's life. And just before that, we end with our concluding prayer. Let us pray, God our Father, these boys and girls have partaken of your precious gift in their first Holy Communion, and we are glad. May they, for their part, always choose Jesus Christ as a guide whom they trust, a friend whom they love, and the Lord Jesus whom they obey, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just uh, we begin that ceremony of life. One parent will come forward with their child and take the light from the Paschal candle, which is symbolic of all that we believe in, and pass and carry that light for their child uh, henceforth. Father, Eugene will take the light for me. Now, Patrick, Nigel's, Nigel's father, <coughs> will take the light for, for Nigel. <coughs> Next on the list is James Carrigan. And Seamus will take the light for James. <coughs> Next is David McDermott and Kevin will take the light, his father, for David. Kerry Mitchell <coughs> and Caroline will take the light for Kerry, <coughs> her daughter. <coughs> and last but not least, not leave you out, Colin. John Waters will take the light for Colin, his son. <laughs> and 
down upon us all and remain with us forever. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.